Hello and thank you for coming to check out this video. The primary focus of the video today is to talk about the topology for the CCIE and CCMP collaboration lab that I'm building out. I also wanted to talk a little bit about some of the other projects I've been working on. So we'll just get that out of the way real quick. Um, I'm, I'm almost done with uh, one of the chapters that I'm working on. There's a deadline coming up early next month. And one of the other chapters that I've already handed in has come back from Cisco Press after the writers have given their review of it. And I'll have to take a look at whatever revisions they want to see. But uh, everything's moving along pretty quickly there. I've since see, um, recertified my CCIE. And I've also gotten news that the presentation that I'll be doing in Cisco Live in Las Vegas has also been approved. So 2020 so far has been a pretty big year, very positive year. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what else comes out of it down the road. And I've also decided to make a commitment to myself that at some point this year, 2020, I will have some of my code. I will write some code and, and uh, have the goal of it being added into Cisco CUCM. So I want to have some more code added into a Cisco product. I've done it before, so I know I can do it, and uh, I fully intend on getting it done again this year. With all that said and out of the way, let's go ahead and move into talking about the lab for the CCMP and CCIE collaboration. We can't really talk about the topology without first talking about the hardware and software list. So let's go ahead and pull that up. And we'll notice some things here, like there aren't any hard phones. The WebRTC is gone. There's definitely some changes between um, the Collaboration V2 and Collaboration V3. And I, I compared the two hardware and software lists, the list from V2 and the list from V3. And um, with that, I came up with this logical topology here. And um, you can see that there's multiple different sites. You can see that the different applications which are going to be used and um, we'll have a, a simulated internet, we'll have a simulated backbone, um, and we'll have a simulated internal network as well, which most of this, it looks like it's going to be a really big you know, thing to tackle, but that's just the logical topology. Let's go ahead and take a look at the physical topology now. So you can see here that the, the physical topology is actually really, really, really simple. There's a number of different ways this could have been done. I've actually thought about it for a long time now, which is part of the reason why it's taken me a while to come out with this video. But I came to the conclusion that making a trunk from the UCS over to the switch and doing all of the VLANs and configurations like that on the UCS on the ESXi side is going to be the easiest way to tackle this with the least amount of revisions and the least amount of cabling and things like that. Now, there will be the trunk from the UCS into the switch, but there will also be a trunk from the switch into the small router that I have here so that I can do router on a stick and do my inter VLAN routing there. Then I'll also have a connection going over to my uh, home router so that some of my applications can have actual internet access, allowing me to uh, remain on my home network and RDP into my workstations like my Windows workstation or my Windows server or um, maybe even put some sort of team viewer or something on my workstation and access it remotely so that I can still you know fool around in my lab while I'm maybe uh, in a hotel or wherever I might be which if you're studying for the CCIE I highly recommend doing this as well because there were times where I was traveling but I didn't want to stop studying. So having my remote access set up on my home lab was a big thing. That was, that was absolutely uh, helpful. Now, what I want to say about that is I, I went about it a poor way at first. I um, just did port forwarding. I picked some random port and opened it up on my home router. And then I had that port convert over to whatever port is used for RDP. I can't remember. And what ended up happening was um, one day I went to go get into my, uh, my Site B workstation. At the time, this was Collaboration V1. 
So there was a Site B workstation that I was jumping into, and lo and behold, somebody else was in the server uh, messing around with things, doing some sort of online shopping, which I assume they must have had stolen somebody's credit cards or credit card information or something, and they wanted to do the online shopping from what looked like my IP address. I don't know. That's the only logical thing that I came up to. But anyway, when I jumped into the, to the RDP session, it booted that person out. Then they jumped back in and booted me out. This went back and forth about three times or so. And I went to my home router and pulled out the, the cable that connected my router to my, um, my modem. That way I could keep everything up and running and sever my connection to the world, but also uh, RDP into the, into the um, Windows VM to check and see what all they were doing. And uh, in the end, what I ended up doing was getting crazy paranoid, um, setting up all sorts of security at the house and, and uh, you know, wiping all sorts of devices out of concern that maybe they had RDP'd into my Raspberry Pi or SSH'd in my Raspberry Pi or whatever it might be. I ended up changing how my internal IP addressing was at home and all of that. So learn from my lesson, do something that's more secure than port forwarding and understand that there's always some sort of risk when you allow your home lab to uh, be accessed remotely. Now, looking at this configuration, if you've never set any of this type of stuff up, it may seem a little bit overwhelming, but just understand that if you just stick to the process and keep moving forward, things will go pretty well. Um, I know for me it was very overwhelming because I didn't know what I was doing and everybody's topology that I followed, they only gave you the logical topology, they didn't give you the physical topology, which made things a little bit more difficult. So something else that I'll be doing as well to try to help mitigate some of the uh, feeling of, of being overwhelmed or whatever, I'll, whatever I have for my, my switch that I'm putting in the lab and the router that I'm putting in the lab, I'm going to provide that configuration in a later video. I don't have it all configured just yet, so that's why I'm not providing it here. But once it is all you know said and done and, and packaged up nicely, I'll put it into probably a compressed file on GitHub, and then I'll just provide the link in one of my video descriptions down the road. I'll be sure to call that out specifically whenever I do it. So that's all I had to, to say about the uh, lab in this video, but I did want to get back a little bit to talking about the things that I have coming up, Cisco Live specifically. I intend on doing a vlog of my Cisco Live experience. I, I actually am going to do a video about my Cisco Live San Diego now that um, Cisco Live Las Vegas is coming up. The problem with my, my Cisco Live uh, San Diego is that I didn't really uh, have much going on on the YouTube channel yet, so I wasn't going around taking videos and documenting things. But I documented enough, I have plenty of pictures and things to, to talk about that I'll be able to make at least a short video. Now also with the Cisco Live experience that I'll be having later on this year, I fully intend on getting as much swag as I can and using some of that as giveaways on the channel. And I also get to do some of the recruiting events for Cisco and whenever we do recruiting events at Cisco, I get some swag from that as well. So uh, I usually end up giving that away to whoever wants it, family or friends or people that I work with that didn't have the opportunity to get the swag. Um, what I'll probably start doing later down the road though is giving away that stuff on the channel. And another thing that we do is we try to host a training once a year where we actually have um, Cisco partners and Cisco customers come on site to Cisco, to, to our campus. Um, and also remotely over WebEx for training, where tech engineers and tech technical leaders will come and deliver uh, training sessions, almost like a, a fraction of a Cisco Live. It, it's not, it doesn't have all the fun and the glitz and glamour. It's uh, really just focused on the technical sessions. That's, that's uh, about a week long that we do that. Later on this year, when we start planning that, I'll be sure to uh, put out notifications here on the channel. But with those, we typically have swag for the people that come on site. And the um, people who are helping put together the event and the people that are doing presentations get to take some of that swag as well.
I was actually able to go dig up some of the swag that I've gotten um, relatively recently. One of them is a Cisco flashlight that's pretty bright. It's got LED in there. And um, on the back of it, there's actually a little magnetic piece so that if you're working but you need your hands, you and if there's, there's some metal nearby, you can just set the uh, flashlight to be connected to the metal and uh, you'll have your hands free light there so that you're free to do your work. The other thing is a, a nice, actually a pretty nice tumbler. I haven't even used that at all. I actually only took it out of the box for the video here. This is probably something that I'll give away down the road. And last but not least, there's these pretty cool lenses that can go to your smartphone or you know whatever device you want to put them on and uh, one is like a fisheye lens or whatever if you like to go doing uh, pictures and you want to mess around with having a lens on your smartphone these are actually pretty cool for doing that this is something else that I will probably give away down the road but um, I'll probably bundle them together and wait till I get some other things to bundle with them there are other items that I get from time to time like I got a really nice backpack from Cisco Live I gave it away to a friend of mine that uh, does work with Cisco stuff. He's actually a Cisco employee now. Um, but th things like that, like the backpacks or really nice things, I will probably do as individual giveaways. Um, so keep an eye out for all of that. The lump together giveaways and the individual giveaways. I won't announce when I'm going to do them. They'll be at random and I'll probably just feed it into the middle of a video. So thank you for watching. And um, I look forward to getting the next video out for this lab series. Uh, if you are interested in any of it, please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.